Even though I am taking my mask off up here as a presenter, I'm going to ask that all of you for a moment just make sure your masks are up over your nose so that we can still make sure we get a chance to be in this space together. Um, and I'm also going to ask if you can please put your phones away or put them on silent or put them under your chairs. All right. Good morning. I'm Mr. Fortunato. I'm excited and honored to stand before you as Thayer's new head of school. And I'm excited to welcome you to convocation at the start of this year, which is also Thayer's 145th year. Now, I mentioned that fact as an important reminder of two things. The first is this. We are connected to a whole past and history of our school, to all the students who maybe didn't sit in, the, sit in those exact chairs you're in right now, but have stood on this campus and helped create the great school that we have today. You're connected to them. But I also raise that idea of being 145 years into a legacy because it reminds us that every day, oh, hello, <laughs> um, we have a responsibility to strive to make this school better than it was the day before, better than it was the year before or the decades before. And that goes for whether you're brand new, like me, or many of you who are here today, or whether you're at the beginning of the end of your third journey, a nine months shy of graduation. So the risk of stating something obvious, um, I'm going to start by saying, we, all of us, we are Thayer. We're part of this community, and obviously we have obligations to our own individual achievements, but we also have a duty to the common good, to your classmate in your history class, to your teammate on the volleyball or soccer team, to the teacher who goes the extra mile to help you understand declensions or differential equations, to the best friend you're going to perform alongside on this stage at some point, or to the student who you've never met before, who maybe it's their first day, and they haven't made their first day or friend. And you know we've all probably been there, whether it's here or someplace else. So I'm going to ask you today, when you see that person, and you see that person struggling to find a place to be and a person to be with, if you have an open seat, invite that person. You know what a big difference that makes to people. So the, the best schools, the schools that I've also had the privilege of being a part of in my, in my past, they're the ones that focus on the common good, on how people take care of each other, having each other's backs, treating each other exceptionally well, striving and even sometimes struggling to demonstrate respect and dignity. The best schools are places where when we fail, when we mess up, and when we disappoint each other, people help lift us up. They help us not, they don't tear us down. We hold people accountable, but we also extend forgiveness and extend grace. And the best schools are the places where people stand up and stand by and stand behind each other. That's to me what excellence looks like. That's why I came here even in a very bizarre pandemic interview process where I barely had a chance in some ways to know this community as much as I wanted to, that's what drew me here. And that's what I saw in Thayer, and that's what I planned for Thayer's future. And that's what it, excellent schools should be. And that's what I think it means when we will say, often, we are Thayer. Let me ask for a show of hands. Who here ever, has ever seen a Marvel movie? Okay, the Disney marketing people will be very pleased to see that. One of my favorite scenes in, uh, in one of those movies, the one that really kind of sticks with me, is the end of uh, that movie, Endgame, when Thanos, in that sort of deep, gravelly voice, he like, turns and says, you know, I am inevitable. And then Tony Stark, who has that improvised sort of gauntlet on his, on his arm, says, and I am Iron Man. And then he snaps his fingers and saves the universe, or half the universe, or whatever it was. Um, why do I like that scene so much? I'm someone who believes that nothing is inevitable, that no matter what the odds are, the challenges are, there's always a way for courage and caring people, courageous and caring people to rise up, to take control of their lives, and can take, take control of their situations and change the world. That's especially true when people come together to uh, tap other talents and their energies and their love of community, and when they're daring enough to ask and then seek answers to really important questions. So I have three questions that I wanted to pose to all of you at the start of this school year. And they're ones that I think really matter. It's this. What will you stand for? What do you need? And what will you give? So let me start with the first one. What will you stand for? And what I mean by that is what really matters enough to you that you're willing to be known for it? You're willing to work at it, willing to defend it, even sacrifice for it, and you're willing to celebrate it. Maybe it's academic achievement in one or all of your classes, daring to try some new things, standing up for a friend or a classmate when someone says or does something they shouldn't do, even when it's going to cost you some social capital. Maybe it's putting cause before yourself or team before yourself. Whatever those things that you're going to choose to stand for are, now is the time to think about it. It's the time to explore it with the people around here who care about you, 
including your teachers and your coaches and your family and your friends. Too many people wait way too long in their lives to ask this question, and they miss out on so many things because they don't even know what's important to them. So start thinking about that now at the start of this new school year and when you're surrounded by all these people who are going to help you think that through. Now, when it comes to how I answer that question, I mean, there are a lot of values and virtues and people in my life who I you know, care deeply about, most importantly, my family. But when it comes to that question of what will I stand for as your head of school, the answer is 100% clear to me. I will stand for all of you, each of you, all of you, and I always will. Second question I want you to consider, what do you need? What do you need to feel connected to others? What do you need from your teachers to challenge yourselves to be better at things, to be creative, to try new things, to dig deeper in a subject that's hard for you? What do you need to be a better athlete or a leader or a performer? What do you need to get through challenging times? And there's no doubt we're in the midst of very various challenging times right now. We're wearing masks and we are dealing with a pandemic that hasn't gone away yet. There's lots of anxiety. We're all trying to get in to meet new friends and start a new school year. The most important and the most successful, excuse me, and fulfilled people that I know, they ask themselves that question, what do I need a lot? And then they talk to people who care about them. They seek advice to figure out what they need, and then they ask for the help to get it. Your advisors, your teachers, your coaches, all the adults in this community, they're gonna be here to help you figure that out during your journey at Thayer. And if you're like most human beings, young or old, you may not have even figured out at all what you need yet. But we want you to figure it out so that you can grow and succeed and eventually become the person you want to be and choose to be, not the person you think others want you to be. So asking for help, asking for it is brave, it's smart, it also makes us feel vulnerable, and no one wakes up in the morning, probably none of you wake up in the morning going, God, I can't wait to be more vulnerable at school today, <laughs> right? I feel the same way, and, and yet I ask that question a lot, and I force myself to ask people for help, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it makes me feel less head of school-like. It's the pathway to better things. Now, I've had, again, the privilege of working at a lot of different institutions in Providence College and right before this, Blair Academy and Harvard University. And again, I've gotten a chance, I've been so fortunate to work with some of the smartest, hardest working and most compelling people, people literally who are in every industry, people who lead companies, people who literally lead governments and countries. I've gotten to know a lot of them. And you know the thing that they tell me over and over again, the secret to their success, the secret to the success, and I'm leaning in now, Surround yourself with people who make you better and ask for their help. Here's something I'm gonna need from you, I'm gonna ask of you in order to lead this school well and help each one of you and this school achieve higher heights. It's something that I both want for you and both want from you. It's pretty simple, treat each other well. Treat each other well with dignity and respect, with curiosity, with an open mind, open heart. I know that sounds so simple. Treat each other well, of course we're gonna do that. But it's also so big, because all the great things we do here and we're going to do here depend on it. And treating each other well, it's more important than any championship you're gonna win, more important than getting your name on the honor roll, more important than getting the starring role, and yes, I'll say it, more important than what college you go to. Real learning the kind of learning that actually brings great things to your life. It's built squarely on how you treat people and the relationships you make with them. And here's another secret that's not so much of a secret. The better you are at building relationships with other people founded on trust and respect, the more you're gonna draw people to you. And the more opportunities and doors are gonna open for you. So those championships and the starring roles and the honor roll and those great colleges, universities, schools, and jobs, the more you focus on building really strong relationships, the more those things are gonna be made available to you. So it's not just a nice thing to do, it's a good thing to do and a smart thing to do. I think relationships in life are the difference maker, and you all need to be good at making them. That's my pronouncement. You all need to be good about making them no matter what you choose to do in life. And I mean for Thayer, in terms of how we build relationships, how we teach you to be building relationships, I want us to be the best at it. Because after all, we are Thayer. So my third and last question is, what will you give? As you start this year, what are you going to give back? How are you going to lift up your classmates, your teammates, your friends? Will you dare to share your story, like your real story, the story about who you are? Share your talent, maybe your razor-sharp wit or your lame sense of humor, which I fall on that latter category. You'll hear a lot of dad jokes throughout the course of the year, so I hope you enjoy those. Will you share your love of classical music or Olivia Rodrigo songs? I was waiting for the murmur at that point. Thank you. 
<laughs> Will you share your passion for Marvel movies or award-winning documentaries for musical theater, environmentalism, Greek and Roman history, clash of clans, coding, human rights, artificial intelligence, painting, paintball, basketball, politics, service, whatever? Will you be fierce and generous in sharing those things with this community? And will you give people the benefit of the doubt and assume that they have good intentions? Will you give your genuine curiosity and a willingness to listen when you're talking to your friends in the dining hall, when you're debating in history class, when you're talking about a book that you either loved or hated in your English class, or when you're talking about aspects of identity in your anti-racism class? What will you give? And will you show kindness to others even when they don't afford you that same courtesy? So asking these questions and taking the journey to answer them requires a lot of things of us. Uh, two things I think it requires most. Courage and caring. It requires the courage to stand up for what we believe, the courage to ask for, uh, for help, and the courage to define what makes this community stronger. And now, I have all kinds of definitions of what courage is, but I'm going to just invoke a few of the ones that you shared with me. And thank you, by the way, for those of you who shared your quotes about uh, courage and leadership with me. I'll share a couple here. Real courage is being afraid, but doing it anyway. And thanks to Annabelle McNamara for sharing that quote. It's being yourself every day in the world that tells you to be somebody else. Thanks, Maddie Siegel, for that. And it's not about being fearless, but instead, it's the willingness to act in the face of fear. Thank you, Chucker, Tucker Channing Chuck, for that quote. Thanks again for sending those quotes. There are going to be ways I'm going to share that in the community over the course of this year. Um, I'm going to ask all of us to summon the courage to move past discomfort during hard times. And again, there are plenty of those to go around right now, not just in the pandemic. Um, no matter what news channel or, or feed that you look at, you know the world is a, an amazing place and also the world is a pretty divided place right now. And it may not feel like you are the ones who are going to make all the difference in changing that right now, but I'm going to tell you you are. You are. And that's the investment that we're making is so that you can continue to do the work that lots of other people are doing to make this world a better place and also so that you can experience a lot of the joy and the fun that happens not just at Thayer or beyond that. And I also call upon you to blend that courage with the kind of caring that makes us better people. When we do that, when we blend courage and caring, you know, empathy with our courage, there's nothing, there's nothing that can stop us. And that, I'll be honest, I think that's Thayer's competitive advantage. That's who I see us being when we're at our best. Because to be great, and I know we're great, but to be great, you also have to be good and good to each other. So I know the, re the responsibility belongs to all of us to live and lead and learn with courage and caring. I want you to also know as your head of school, I'm going to do everything I can to model that, what I'm asking you to do, and encourage you to that commitment to treat each other well. I also want to tell you something that's really important for me to say squarely and clearly. I will also hold you accountable when you don't do it. You should expect that from me. I owe it to all of you, and I owe it to this school. So please be clear, treating each other well in this community is not merely a suggestion. Being good to one another is not optional. No doubt, we're not going to live up to our best selves, so to speak, every single day. But saying that we can't do it, it's such a cop-out. Sometimes I hear people saying that in this world today, treating others poorly, showing disrespect, having a closed mind, behaving badly, it's just the way the world is. In fact, some say it's inevitable. Well, anytime someone tells you that that behavior is inevitable, regardless of who it is, even if it's a oversized purple Marvel villain with a handful of Infinity Stones, don't believe them. Don't believe them. Instead, summon your own vision of Iron Man in your head on the battlefield and counter the lie that those things are inevitable by declaring loud and proud or even just very loudly in your head, we are fair. We can always do what we set our minds to. And if afterwards you want to snap your fingers just because it makes you feel good too, you can do that as well. Um, I'm really excited to be here in this place with you and to start this year ahead and to get to know you and to teach you and to learn from you and to cheer you from the sidelines or from this audience or everywhere in between. So I want us to make this year a great one. Please wear your masks over your nose, no chin straps. It's not an attractive look anyway. 
Um, please make sure you're wearing your mask. Otherwise, all the things that we want to do, we can't. So please do that as best you can. Work hard. And again, because he repeats messages often, be good to each other. I was going to end with Go Tigers, but I'm going to actually in a moment turn it over to uh, middle school speakers. So I'm just going to end with, and I will be saying Go Tigers. I'm sure we all will on many occasions. But I'm going to end actually with just a note of gratitude. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for welcoming, into this, welcoming me into this community. And now I'm very proud to introduce two of our middle school ambassadors, Cassidy Mullen and Ella Aiello, who are gonna offer a welcome today. And they're gonna be followed by Dylan McNutta, who's president of the student government, who's gonna share his remarks. Here's to a great year ahead. Thank you, guys. Good morning, Mr. Fortunato, Mrs. Hammond, faculty, administration, and fellow students. I'm Cassidy Mullen, a current eighth grade student and student ambassador for the Minot School. I hope you're all just as excited as I am for the school year. As we begin the school year this morning, I have a few quick experiences that I would love to share with you all. When I first arrived at Thayer in sixth grade, it was my first time ever switching schools, and I was extremely nervous. If it wasn't for the kindness and inclusivity from the teachers and students, I'm not sure if I'd be standing here on this campus today. If I'm being honest, I was a little shy and dreaded social interactions with people I didn't know. But everyone was so welcoming that I decided to open up a bit. That way, I was also able to find other people that shared the same interests as me. So for all new students and teachers too, I hope you are also feel welcomed and included in our lovely community, just as I did. Also, last year the pandemic really affected our education and made things challenging. However, I found it was also the perfect opportunity to try new sports and activities. I attempted volleyball for the first time and found it quite enjoyable. I wouldn't really do this anywhere else, so I'm thankful for the opportunity I was given to pick up something new. I encourage everyone to set a goal for yourself and try to learn or do at least one new thing this year. Maybe play a new sport or sign up for the drama club. That way, you can meet new people that may not be in any of your current classes. I hope everyone has a great school year and strives to be the best you can be. Thank you for your time, and now I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Ella. I'm Ella Aiello, and I'm a current eighth grade student here at Thayer. On behalf of my classmates and fellow ambassadors, I hope that everyone is eager and enthusiastic about the start of the new school year. Like Cassidy, I began my journey at Thayer Academy in the sixth grade, and I remember it was a very positive experience. When I think about the year, it brings back unforgettable memories. Since playing games at Camp Wing during orientation, everyone has always been so welcoming, kind, and inclusive. I met classmates that I know will be my forever friends, and I look forward to meeting new people in the years to come. I am also fortunate to collaborate with teachers that know my strengths and weaknesses, who tirelessly support me academically and personally. At times, they push me out of my comfort zone to make sure I grow in many areas. I hope that you all make deep and lasting connections with your peers and your teachers. One of my favorite aspects about there in the middle school is our close community and teamwork. Everyone, ranging from teachers to classmates, are willing to help you be the best that you can be in order to succeed. At there, we appreciate each other's similarities and differences. We celebrate our accomplishments and support each other's challenges respectfully and together as a team. If you need help with anything at all, don't be afraid to ask. Everyone is here to support you, and we're in this together. This year, we have a lot to look forward to, even as we continue to navigate through this pandemic. I encourage everyone to continue to be resilient, resourceful, flexible, and most importantly, to be kind. With that, we will certainly have a great year. Good luck there, Academy. Thank you, Mr. Fortunato. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you all, and a special welcome back to the class of 2022. My name is Dylan McDonough, 
and I am a senior and I am the president of the student government. I want to take a few moments today to touch upon the importance of community and connections at Thayer. Thayer is a community that in some ways is similar to your local neighborhood. However, it is also very different. The members of your local community probably share many similar characteristics that could be based on religion, race, or socioeconomic considerations. It is very important, however, to recognize that Thayer has a broad range of members that come from many different communities, and we need to welcome everyone to ours. Thayer's philosophy is to inspire a diverse community of students to moral, intellectual, aesthetic, and physical excellence so that each may rise to honorable achievement and contribute to the common good. The success of Thayer and its mission statement depends on us to come together and advance our community. To me, being part of the community means many things, but it especially means being kind, respectful, and thoughtful to everyone. This is something we have to be mindful of each and every day, and we can't take it for granted. To me, building a, and advancing a community can start by simply saying hello to somebody, asking somebody who might be sitting by themselves at lunch to join you and your group, introducing yourself to a new classmate or teammate, being mindful that there are dozens of new students among us who are naturally pretty nervous about being in a new school. I know I was starting here in sixth grade. And recognizing that we also have middle school students across the campus that we need to include and keep a watchful eye on. All of us need to be thoughtful and lead by example. Once again, for me, being part of the school community always goes back to be simply being kind, respectful, and thoughtful to everyone. Connections are also really important to our experience at Thayer and strengthening our community. Personally, I've been very lucky to have formed some amazing connections at Thayer. Take, for example, the relationship that me and my friends and I have developed with Ms. Cochran as sixth graders in the middle school by doing plays, where I truly mastered the art of being a backup singer. <laughs> my relationship with Mr. White as my freshman advisor, who blew me away by how smart he was and how much knowledge he has in his head. My relationship with Ms. Kelleher, who has always challenged me and pushed me to be my best and has been my teacher for now three years. My relationship with Mr. McFarish, my current advisor, who I respect to no end. My relationship with Ms. Lukens, who I've worked closely with on the student government, who has always had an open door for me and who also had a great connection with my oldest brother, Michael. Or my relationship with Coach Toussaint, who I was scared to death of in the middle school. My personal list of connections includes middle school teachers, high school teachers, school administrators, and coaches, and had a wide range of personalities, to say the least. These individuals who, these are individuals who I feel can always reach out and talk to me if I need help or if something is bothering me. No doubt I have reached out to all these individuals over the course of the last six years, and for sure I will seek their advice and guidance this year. Obviously, connections also include classmates and friends. I encourage you all to be thoughtful about the relationships that you are forming now and in the future. The main point that I would like to make to, about connections is that these relationships don't simply happen. You have to work at them. You have to reach out to people and be active in the community. You have to open up a bit, take some risks, be active in the community, uh, take some risks, and share your stories with people in order to truly form a connection. If you do, then you will have something great and you will have helped yourself and you will have helped Thayer achieve its mission. And most likely your connection will have helped strengthen our community. I look forward to an amazing year together. Thank you again to Cassidy, Ella, and Dylan for their inspiring words today. Um, go have a great day and a great year, and go Tigers. Thank you. <laughs>